Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Ingster from Arbitech Tools. Um, for my part of the, uh, the Maker Fest, I'm going to focus on things that you can do at home with very, very little tools. Of course, I'm happy if you've got some Arbitech tools, but uh, this, you know, I'm going to concentrate on anything at all, um, especially easy things, because not everybody's got, uh, got access to uh, a really good shed or anything. But uh, what I'll do first of all is just show you a little uh, around my place and, and where I work and where Christine works. And, and, uh, uh, and then I'll go around and just have a look what's around in my yard, etc. And I'll see what I can make. Um, and, uh, and then I'll show you how I make it. So uh, down here is my shed, my pride and joy. We, uh, we've only been here two years and we built uh, as large a shed as we could. You can see we've got solar on the roof and my trusty little ute down there. Down there. Um, one third of it has been uh, uh, taken by my wife, Christine, who uses it as a studio. And the other two thirds is my woodworking general area. So let's go down there. So in this section is Christine's section. This is the, uh, the tidier side of the shed. <laughs> yeah, Christine does her art and stuff like that. We get good light coming in from here, so. Is one of Christine's paintings, but she normally does abstract stuff. Where is anything there? Oh well, not to worry, her art stuff. So we won't go through this way, we'll go around through the doors. So in here is uh, where I work. Um, when I do Kev Shed shows, I usually film just here. Have that background so it always looks quite neat, but the truth is, I'm a messy guy, all right? I think creative people are usually messy, but there you go. Um, I have a, uh, a, a Roblin, uh, um, what do you call them? A combination machine, three phase. It's only got an eight inch uh, uh, planar thickness. It's a very old machine, but I love it. I've, I've used it for 30 or 40 years. Uh, a wonderful machine. Um, and over here, Over here I have a, a workbench which was built for me by a guy named Paul Molnar uh, back in the uh, early 80s um, when I was a hippie down in Nana and uh, uh, this guy Paul built beautiful benches. I, I know Scott Wires down in Mugger River has also got one of these wonderful old desks made of Jarrah. Um, and then basic machines like a lathe, um, a bandsaw, it's a good bandsaw and a dust extractor. Um, compressor, and other basic, really important basic items like a guitar. Um, and now what I'll do is I think I'll just have a little look around to see what uh, what we could work with to maybe make something, make a few things. So let's have a look over here. I've got some wood here. I've got lots of wood under the house, but I've got some nice pieces that were given to me by John Miller. And I've got some building and carpentry material here. So... Mm, I don't know. I'll have a look. We've got a lot of uh, bush that, uh, around us and so I've got access to a lot of wood about this size. Most of the bush here is really quite small because it was uh, clear felled about uh, 15 or 20 years ago but there's still quite a bit of uh, wood that I can make use of. Over here, from here. Uh, we just recently had a pile of uh, Mill ends from the local sawmill dropped off here for firewood. It's actually green, so it's not really good for this season. But um, but even so, there's some nice big chunks of wood, which might be nice for carving and that sort of thing, so I can use that. And over here, this pile of wood here is what I've been using for quite a while now. Um, when we built the house two years ago, we uh, asked the, the, the bulldozer driver clearing it, the, the area for the house to just pile the wood up so that I could use it. And I've been making really good use of this wood. Uh, there's all kinds of trees in here. Uh, Mary, uh, uh, Jarrah, um, there's, there's all kinds of wood there. There's some bigger pieces down there. So every now and then I, I cut it up with a chainsaw and then turn it into something. I've got quite a few cardboard boxes that uh, are left over from when we moved here, uh, moving box, packing boxes. So. I might have a look at a few ideas that I can do using boxes. 
cardboard boxes. Today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to try and uh, make a uh, coffee table from nothing more than a uh, uh, rough wood from a pallet. I'm thinking what I'll do is I'm going to line it up in this cardboard box and then I'm just going to pour the resin in and then I'm going to shape it. So as simple as that. So there'll be no joinery. It may work, it may not work, but uh, let's find out. Okay, so here's the uh, wood that I've got from the pallet. As you can see, it's not the best of wood. It's uh, pretty rough, it's got nail holes in it. It's not dressed. It's got a few splits in it where the nails uh, came out. Um, so what I intend to do is to make use of these features, not flaws. Um, so uh, I'm gonna use it in a rough form and uh, see, what it, see what it turns out like, so. What I'm going to do now is use uh, some uh, tape to seal up the edges of the bottom. I've got a piece of uh, cardboard, flat cardboard to go in the bottom and I just want to seal up to prevent the resin from running out of, it, out of the edges. Okay, I've cut four pieces and uh, put them in the bottom here and by pure coincidence they fit exactly I mean I might have had to cut one down uh, or I thought I would but they just happen to fit perfectly so that's really good so that's going to be the table top and then I'm going to cut pieces for the sides I'm thinking of putting one of the thicker boards in each corner for the legs so that'll make it fairly hefty, but may as well use these corners as well, as corners. In it goes. 15 mil for a litre. Now I could colour this, but I figured that uh, for this it might be better clear. Um, I did spend a bit of time making sure that it was level. Just let the resin soak in. I've lifted up all of the pieces there so that they're all up joined to it. I think what I'll do is I'll also put resin around the top here later once that's set. Just to add a bit of strength to the top, to the, to the bottom part of it. Okay, so I'll cut away the cardboard and see what it looks like. Okay, I've decided to take the bottom section out here so that it creates a bit of an arc just to make it look a little bit more elegant. So it'll, it'll rest on these four corner posts. So I'm just going to take these arcs out. Well, that's about it. Um, I've uh, I finished sanding. I've only used rough sanding discs 
and uh, I've only lightly sanded it just to take down any high spots and I'm leaving a few things there. It's even got a couple of hammer marks in it. I don't mind. Nice finish on the top. So you can see the, the top is beautifully flush where the uh, resin has gone right up to the top and sealed it all. Okay. And the sides, I've taken the sides down. It's a beautiful sort of rustic finish. And I'll just turn it up. Now I did have a couple of boards like this one here. I had this one come, come loose because it was only held at this end here with the, with the uh, resin. Um, and what I did is I just put um, um, hot melt glue on it and just stuck it back into position. And then I realized that I could put hot melt glue in, in all, of the, all of the spots just to bring it, make it all much more um, rigid. And you'll find it's very, very strong. And you can see on the very uh, the top, I put those straps across there. That's with the uh, with the resin when the resin was wet. So this is this is bonded to the top and made the top very secure. So all in all, it's a very simple, easy project. quickest job that I've ever done. You could do this at home with nothing more than a sander. I used a, I used the Arbitec uh, Power Carver which is really great for this sort of work because it's got dust extraction which is good um, and variable height so you can get it nice and level but in truth you could use any kind of a sander so you probably don't need anything more than a cardboard box, uh, a pallet, maybe a hammer to knock it apart and uh, uh, even a hand saw just to cut the pieces and that's it so it doesn't get any easier than that This little song is for those, uh, in this country anyone, anyway, uh, a certain circle of people who seem to be uh, uh, ignoring the, uh, the uh, recommendations to self-isolate or, you know, stay away from people. So this one's for them.
some nice pieces of wood here. Again, given to me by John Miller. <laughs> the Miller? Um, he's actually a jeweler, not a miller. Um, but a lot of things like these stakes and things like that could maybe be made into something. I've got some nice jarrah, red gum. But over here, I think, is the best. I have a trailer load. I've got a trailer load of millions which we use for firewood, or which is we buy for firewood. But uh, the moment I got them, I took one look at them and thought, hell, this is, this is really good wood. I, I noticed that each piece has been docked off because it all contains a floor, a bit of sap or something on it. So um, that's probably why they don't use them in furniture. Um, however, I keep using this phrase features, not floors. So I'm, I think I'll be using a lot of this to see what I can do with this stuff. So that it's, it's so perfect. So I'm not assuming that, you know, you're going to have access to something like this, but it, I think the ideas that I have might be, might work for almost any kind of material. Hi folks, welcome to Kev's Shed. In my last video, I, uh, I made a table just using uh, pallet wood and, uh, and epoxy. And uh, that technique has intrigued me uh, as, an, uh, as a way to use all kind of wasteful wood. Now, I've got this whole load of uh, millions, firewood actually, um, that, uh, uh, well, it, it's normally for burning and uh, you can see every piece has been docked off because it's got a floor of some kind on it. And as I always say, features not floors. And I'm just wondering if I can use that same technique to build up a, a tabletop. Um, my wife actually wants me to build one for uh, an outdoor setting that she's got and uh, I'm intrigued to see whether or not uh, this will work as well so uh, I'm going to I'm going to lay it out uh, and then try and let the epoxy fall in between the, the different pieces of wood I might stagger it like bricks and uh, see if that's good enough again might work might not this is the table that she wants to put a hard top on it's normally an outdoor table or an outdoor setting but because we're in a, in a covered area um, she'd like to have a hard top on it so uh, make that the project then. My trailer load of millions. It's usually a good surface on each one. Well, maybe not always. But it shouldn't matter for this technique. Okay, so what I've done is I've got this sheet of plywood. I've got it all nice and level. And uh, and I've got a piece of wood with a straight edge on it and I'm going to line that up and uh, then I think I'm going to use some uh, cling wrap and put that all over the plywood so that the epoxy doesn't stick to the plywood and uh, then the plan is that I'm going to put the uh, epoxy maybe on the edges just to make sure that it gets in between and literally I'm going to pour it over the top and let it run down inside them and then I'm just going to push them together. I'm not sure if I'm even going to bother to clamp them. Um, the idea is that uh, it's kind of like joining, joining wood together like uh, those, river, those river type um, boards and things that people do. Only instead of a big river I'm going to have them fairly close. And the idea of that is that I don't have to dress any of the timber. Right? The epoxy is going to do the, uh, the filling and then I'm going to plane the whole lot, um, maybe using the, uh, the uh, power carver with the turbo plane, which is perfect for this sort of job. What I'll do is I'm, I'm just putting it on the uh, on the edge just to make sure that there's some in between. But then I'm going to pour it on over the, the top of it afterwards anyway. So it's 
so that it runs into all of the crevices. I'm just filling um, any spots where it's soaked down and through. I was concentrating more on the side grain because I think of the, the brick shape and the side grain is probably the strongest. Um, but the end grain, I'm just trying to fill the gaps. So I might uh, let this set. First of all, it's already sort of jelly. I'll let this set and uh, then it won't run out if I put in another lot. So I've only got one litre of um, resin there and it seems to be plenty. Okay, so now that all the epoxy is nice and hard, and so I'm going to proceed to plane it down. I'm going to use the uh, Arbitech, uh, they call it the power unit. And uh, look, this, this product isn't available in the US just yet. Um, and it will be, they've been waiting on, a, on a, the right motor for the, the United States, but we hope to get it there soon, uh, notwithstanding the current problems with uh, getting things around the world. Um, but it will be there soon. And what this allows me to do is use the turbo plane and uh, I can adjust the height and just take off all the high spots and then get it down nice and level. And then I can put the sanding disc and use quite an aggressive sanding disc if I like, and then I can uh, sand it with no dust and, uh, and it's, it's automatically leveling too because you can adjust it so that you're just taking off the high spots first and then you get it really nice and flat. So this will be a great tool just to do this. Probably the only tool I need apart from the pieces of wood and the epoxy. The trick is to not go too aggressively with the uh, uh, power unit uh, and the, the planer too, too soon. So you'll see that some spots I've taken off uh, quite a bit of material and here I have it and that's because that's low and that's high. And the idea is you take off all the high spots first and then just check it and you'll find that you can build it really nice and level. So, so just, you know, when you, when you set it, you want to turn it so that it's cutting but, but flat and then take off all the high spots and then later you can go a little bit more aggressive. Fortunately, somebody helping me misunderstood which way the wood goes when we were putting it together. And so I've got a rather large feature here that I need to fill. Um, when you do this, the idea is this is this would normally be the other way up. And the, uh, the idea is that the, the uh, resin comes down and fills all of the gaps. So the, 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 the best face of the wood should be on the underside when you're doing this. So uh, if I fill that, uh, the rest of it should come up okay. Um, look, I don't normally talk about uh, Arbitec tools um, uh, at Kev Shed. Um, this this uh, video channel uh, I, I came up with to uh, promote just being creative and uh, making things simply with the fewest tools as possible. Most of you, I'm sure, already know that uh, I'm the CEO of Arbitec and that I've designed most of our tools and that uh, um, uh, that the tools that I mostly use are in fact Arbitec tools. But I do want to talk about this one because it did, it did really help me a lot and uh, I think people should know uh, about this particular tool. It's called the, the Power Carver. It's a unit that comes with various attachments for it. Um, it's got variable speed and you can use it with the turbo plane and the sander. And the results are just quite stunning and I mean, I'm still learning about it myself, but what really impressed me is just how beautifully level I was able to do quite a big area. You can see here, and I'll bring you in close so you can see it's, it's absolutely perfectly, uh, perfectly square and flat. 
and uh, I didn't really try hard to do that. I, I really was just uh, working evenly in a figure eight pattern. I started with the turbo plane and removed the bulk of the material to get down to the wood. Then I used the sanding discs and it, uh, there's a few tricks to it. Um, mainly you'll notice it start to take off the high spots first and you keep working those high spots until they, they start to dominate. If you concentrate on the spots where you're not reaching, then you'll, you'll get all uneven. So you, you, you basically keep widening the, the areas that, you, that are going nice and flat until it all joins up. And that's all I did, but I, with a sander, I just worked in, a, worked in a figure eight pattern and just evenly over the entire um, piece. So uh, there it is, beautifully square, beautifully flat. Now, this isn't fine woodworking. Uh, what I've done here is I've got pieces of wood from my firewood heat. Um, they're not dressed, they're, they're, they're not straight. Uh, uh, their edges, they're, they're not even docked off very square um, and I've just used epoxy to join it all together, not epoxy, a, a resin, fiberglass resin, you can use epoxy and maybe some other materials. I did notice that if I went too aggressively with the turbo plane that it started to chip some of the resin um, but if I did it nice and fine and moved slowly over it then it cut it nice and clean um, and then uh, of course I used the sanding discs. It's come up amazingly well I think. Okay, well, I'm about to cut this down to size now. Um, and uh, Christine's told me that she wants it to be more like a, a tray, not a tabletop, and that she wants it to sit on top of that table with a, uh, about one inch around uh, in from the edge of the table so it sits more like a tray. So I just thought I'd tell you that before I cut it so that you realise that I didn't accidentally make it too small. So. Uh, I'm going to cut it down to that size. This wood is called uh, Jarra. It's a local indigenous species which is just about logged out now. It's uh, Quite a shame the way it's being treated. I mean, even now they burn it as firewood. And uh, the local forest department here is called CARM, stands for Conservation and Land Management, which is totally ironic because it's been totally exploited. Most of the jarrah that came out of Western Australia was used for sleepers under British railroads in Africa and under the streets of London. Totally, totally wasted and uh, it's ironic that the organisation is called CALM, you know, we're all supposed to stay calm while they have completely decimated our forests. Anyhow, this, this is uh, wood that ordinarily would be burned and we've now turned it into something, I think, of some beauty. So here is the finished article, I'll just hold it up for you so you can see. It's, uh, as I mentioned, it's not fine woodwork, uh, what I've done is I've used rough blocks of wood um, and it's all joined just by the uh, resin and it's all been filled by the resin so it didn't require any real joinery or anything like that. Um, I mentioned before that you know the whole objective of, of this sort of work is that you can do it with virtu you know very very few tools. Um, I have literally used uh, um, the epoxy or the resin, of course, um, and nearly everything was done with a sander. Um, it's been great having the uh, the Arbitec, uh, um power carver with the sanding unit, but really this could be done with any sander at all. So. Really all you're doing is you're putting wood together with uh, a resin or epoxy and, and uh, you're just letting that set and then you're just sanding the surface. Um, you may have to plane it if you've got very uneven surfaces but because this firewood is, is all uh, millions, it's already nice and dry um, and it was all roughly the same size so it wasn't very much sanding at all. So there it is, I'll take it put it in place and uh, we can see what it looks like.
you see where it's been filled with with the resin so even though it was uh, quite you know wide gaps the, the resin has just gone through and filled all of the all of the gaps um, and that's perfectly fine so now there's a really big gap there it's all filled and nice and smooth it's come up I think really well uh, here it is on the uh, outdoor table so even though we're outdoors um, we're indoors really so it's perfectly fine I just put an oil coating on it and I think it's come up really good so my wife was actually asking me to do herringbone pattern I said get a carpenter <laughs> so that's good use of the uh, of uh, my firewood I think The first thing I want to show you is a cool idea using uh, any, any cordless drill. Um, I don't know about you, but my shed uh, is plagued by uh, cobwebs. I live in the country and uh, so we're constantly getting cobwebs. And a friend of mine, Vince Austin, a uh, very clever man, showed me this cool trick and I'm going to show it to you. So what you need is a piece of dowel and an electric cordless drill. All right. I put the dowel in. Let's go. So here is my drill. And here you see the cobwebs. I put the drill in. And away we go. Um, so to remove them from your uh, dowel, you just simply get a knife, like so, and uh, off it comes. Now you don't have to touch anything, and you're ready to go again. So, fairly good tip, I think, and fun. So... I'm looking at uh, what I can do with uh, these pieces of wood and uh, I had an idea um, in recent times I've become uh, very fond of my glue gun and uh, that's because at a, a recent uh, ladies power carving day that was back in the olden days a couple of weeks ago when people were allowed to move around um, I advise these women who are making bowls to just glue a piece of wood to the base of the the bowl with a hot melt gun and uh, and then we would simply knock that piece of wood off afterwards or carve it off um, in an actual fact we had to carve it off because it was very difficult to knock that piece of wood off and they were just using hot melt um, and so I've got all these blocks of wood so I'm just going to try a couple of little things with it first I, I might just try gluing one here There's plenty of glue. I'll put it on the edge. You've got a few seconds to uh, get it right, and then you push it down. It's still hot on the outside here. Just push all that off. It's very easy to clean up. Now, that join is so strong. It's actually already, I mean, it really should wait a bit longer, but it just is so strong, I just couldn't believe it. So to get that off, I'd have to hit it with a hammer, and even then it can take a bit of doing. Um, I did one just earlier, and the, um, the wood 
broke, it, the glue came apart in most of it, for about a third of it, the wood actually tore out. So the, the glue was stronger than the wood. So it's really quite incredible. I don't know if that's hard enough yet. Yes, it is. And it, it you know, physically, you couldn't break that. So I'm thinking, all right, that's a good quick way to do it. I mean, again, it's not nice joinery and it fills gaps, so it doesn't matter. But it might be good to make a couple of things. And I'm thinking with this sort of wood, it's something that I would like to make, and that is some little birdhouses. Uh, we live out here in the country and, and uh, habitat is going all the time. And the other thing is a, a bat house. I'm not quite sure what they're called. <laughs> um, but a friend of mine, John Miller, has a, a house with all these little bats go into it. And uh, you really just have, have an opening down the bottom and, uh, and they all come in to there. So I might make a couple of uh, a bird house and a bat house. Okay. I've, uh, I've got my bits of wood now, so I'm first of all going to try and make a little um, oh, hot glue gun. I, I'm going to uh, try and make a little birdhouse with these pieces of wood. So basically I've stacked them up, I'll put one piece here, I'll glue one piece there, one piece there, and then that on the front, so that I've got a little cavity in there. And then on the front, then I'll uh, I'll drill a hole so big. I'll put a stick in here, and I'll maybe then we'll cut through the thing into like so, and I'll put a roof on it. So really, all I'm going to use is the glue gun and the saw. I'll band saw this, but you you could do it with a hand saw. So you shouldn't need many tools at all to do this. So let's see how it goes. So to do it easy, I'll do it on the side. So this will be the base. This will be the back. So I guess that will be the other side. And that'll be the front. Okay, so I'll do the bottom first. This is a Bostec blue gun, um, which is much bigger than the little ones, but you can use the little ones as well, I found. They're just as good. Just, you don't get as much glue. Push that down and hold it. That's already solid. What's that? A bit of glue from before. Actually, that's a bit of fiberglass left over from another job. Anyhow. So, now I'll do along this surface. Sorry if you can't see. Now the side on top here. Ooh, I was going to put that in first, but it's not too late. <laughs> Put this one in first. Oh well, let's uh, see what we can do about that. Because once these things are good, they're, they're pretty strong. My glue gun. I might just add to the strength by sealing it. I don't want the birds to get any weather coming in. Now, I really did muck that up. I'm sorry. Can I get that in in time? You know what? I'm going to take the top off because I mucked this up and I'll see if I can get this off. Not easily. You can see how strong it is, all right? Now here, just to show you, that's the wood is broken away rather than the glue. So it just shows you how strong this method is. 
So I'll clean that up if I can. Maybe I'll just use another piece. Okay, so I'll put the front on there first and then I'll glue the top on. I think that's the right way to go. Well, that looks a bit lower than that one. Yeah, that's a better fit. So that'll be the front. Might be easier if I put it on the end here. Good. Now, this one on here. All right. This is our basic bird house. Now, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll put a hole about here. I guess. Stick underneath it and across here be the roof. It just so happens that the piece that I've cut off is just the right length for the roof so <laughs> I thought I was going to have to do that separately but uh, it looks like it's it can be the same pieces um, this one's a bit longer but I'll cut it to the same length that's cool so I'll just break these off if I can not easily I'll have to use a hammer it'll be one side and this one will be the other I'll have to break that apart and make it the same length. I'll cut that the same. Actually, I just realized I'm gonna get two, two little houses out of this. <laughs> so, two houses from one. that up with the chisel. That'll be the roof. How cool is that? Here it is, ready to put the roof on and quite unexpectedly I ended up with a, another um, another little house that I can do here. So I'm going to get two houses for the price of one. So where's the roof part? Mm -hmm. Over here. So now I'm going to glue these on here. Not a perfect fit, but good enough. Good enough for the birds around here anyway. So I'll glue that on there and we go. Perfect, but good enough. I'll be filling that later with the, uh, the glue. So, let's see if I can get this on quick enough. So, I've filled any gaps. And uh, you know, if, there, if there's a bit wider gap, we'll just all fill with glue now. So it should be pretty strong. You saw how hard it is to break it, even if I uh, hit it with a hammer. It's quite amazing. Now I'll drill the hole in there. I actually didn't put this side down properly, so <laughs> this one's a bit short, but I don't think the birds will care. 
I'll drill the hole now and put a dowel in and that'll be it. Well, unfortunately, my um, my hole saw is not quite deep enough to go all the way through. It's very close. So what I'll do is I'll use an eight millimeter drill to stitch around the edges. And uh, I need an eight millimeter drill anyway for the, for the dowel, for the stick, for the perch, I should say. Must have been so close anyway. Oh, how am I going to get it out of there? <laughs> well, there's a dilemma. I'll have to get the pliers to get it out. A bit tricky getting it out of here, but uh, I managed to do it. Um, in hindsight, wonderful thing, hindsight, I probably should have put the base on last and then I wouldn't have had this trouble. There we go. Looking good. So. Now, cut a dowel to go in here, and we're there, I think. So, not that long. What do you think? And uh, for oil, I'll just put on it some uh, decking oil, which uh, I find is great for things which I put outside. So I might just oil that now, and it'll be ready to go. So here we go. Decking oil, suitable for decks, fences, and Bird houses. Let's give that a go. It goes on much easier than paint. And it's got a uh, solar um, inhibitor in it, so. And I'll make this into another one as well. Well, there it is, a little birdhouse made from firewood, mill ends. You could do it with almost any kind of wood. Um, no joinery. Um, again, it's not, this isn't, you know, um, cabinetry or anything like that. This is just using what you've got um, to make stuff. And uh, I'm really intrigued uh, by this uh, uh, hub melt glue and how strong it is and good enough for this sort of thing. Um, so there it is, a little birdhouse. Excellent. And there it is, a little birdhouse. What do you think? Um, I'm just cleaning off the excess glue because uh, there was a bit of miss of me leaving it on and when the, the light on it, it highlighted it. So I'm just taking a bit off so that looks a lot better. Anyhow, I think the birds are gonna like it. No one to walk with, but at least I've got my health. I ain't misbehaving, I'm staying away from you. Can't know for certain if the one I love has got the virus, so it's you I'm thinking of. But at least I'm not dead. Ain't misbehaving. 
I'm staying away from you.